Hey guys, you can see here on my desk that I've been doing some work and I wasn't going to film this today so that's why everything's still kind of a mess but I wanted to share something with you before I stuck it in the box and mailed it off. So here's what happened. A few weeks ago my in-laws visited and they brought a bottle of wine with them. Um, I don't drink wine. My husband will drink a little bit and I don't know if they drink it or not. I just know they brought us a bottle because they went to a winery. And so when I was going to throw the bottle away, after the wine was gone, uh, I saw the cork, of course, and it was similar to this except bigger. And I thought, well, I would like to keep that cork because why not? You know, I only have a billion other corks like this, but <laughs> I'll keep that one. But then I thought, you know, maybe it would be nice to make my mother-in-law something with that cork and send it to her. So what I did was I made her a little charm using her cork that came in the bottle and I'll show you a close-up in just a second. But what it led to was some more creations and I don't know if I put a video up a long time ago of the ones I made before or not but I don't think I did. So what I want to do is just show you these real quick because a few of these are going to be boxed up and mailed out eventually and so I'm going to make a few more and I, maybe while I have all this stuff out I'll just go ahead and do one for you so you see how I make them. They're really easy. What I'm using is uh, some corks like this that I got from an antique mall. It's just a little bag that I found and these are not, not the um, quirky, quirky ones. They're more rubbery, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what they're made out of. The other ones I'm using are, I can't find it. Where is it? Here it is. There's two sizes, a larger and a small, like this. And these just came from Michael's. And the cork that I used that came out of the wine bottle for my mother-in-law is this one here. And it's from Stonehouse Winery, I think is what it's called. I've covered it up now. So I'll show you a close-up real quick of what I made for her. And I put her little initial on here. And a little flower type thing that's also kind of like a cross type thing. And, a, and it looks more like a cross to me because one side's longer and that suits her. And a bird, which she'll, I think, it kind of looks more like a dove to me. So that's... That's what I made her. So then I made a few more and I'll just show you real quick the ones I made. And this is the one using the cork from Michaels. And I think all the rest of them are corks from Michaels. I didn't use the other ones yet. So I'll just show you real quick using some gears and beads and just embellishments that I've had in my little embellishment box for a while. These are little musical instruments. And this one here. And this one. And this one. And this one. Okay, so I just wanted to show you these real quick before they were mailed off. If I was to refer to them, I wouldn't have them to show you, so I thought I'd film this real quick just so that I could show you guys what I'm talking about as I make one for you. I wanted to share with you today how I make them and I made them different ways so they're not going to be I'm not going to show you each one I'm just going to show you the concept so since the first clip I've made a few more charms and I will show you what they look like before we get started this is one here and there are various people that these are going to so I'm not going to tell you about that but I just wanted to show you what they look like so uh, here's one and then I think this is the one I made for myself because I actually wanted one for myself and I didn't have one so I made this one or maybe I have one from a long time ago when I made these before but I've made another one and then this one here just give me a moment to pick them all up this one here I use one of those long um, 
phrase, charms. This one says, encourage your hopes, not your fears. And I attached it. And then there's this one here. Actually, it goes like this. And then this is the last one that I'll show you today. So, let me put all this away, then I'm going to explain to you what I have in front of me and the various things that I've used, and then you guys can take your imagination and go from there. So, let me put this stuff away. Okay, so here are the two different types of corks that I have used. This one is the type that I used for the first charm I showed you for my mother-in-law because that's the type of cork that was in the bottle. And you can see it here. It's a little bit larger than these. These are all the same size, I think. I think I got these at an antique mall, although they're not antique. They were there and I thought, I'll just grab them. And these here are a little different type of cork. They're actually more cork-ish, made of cork. And these came from Michaels, I think, or Hobby Lobby, probably Michaels. I think Michaels has Ashland. It's an Ashland brand. I did keep the uh, top of the package to show you guys a long time ago when I got these, and I've used a bunch of them. This bag was full. There was 30 in here. And there's different sizes. There's this size here, and let me show you the, oops, I will compare the sizes for you. So you can see two sizes come in the bag. And I've only been using the larger size. And I'll get to using the smaller size eventually. So in front of me I have one of the large corks. And to do the top of the cork, to attach things to the top and bottom, there are two types of things that I used. And one of them is called an eye hook. It's like this. And I used those on this particular one, so you can see the top and the bottom have one screwed in. And I'm not using this today, but they are called eye hooks, and you can get those at any hobby store. And the thing I am using today, though, is these, and these either came from Tim Holtz or Seven Gypsies, and I don't remember which, and I don't know what they're called. I don't have the packaging anymore, but he has, or whoever sells them, has a few different colors in there, and these two are the ones I pulled out to use for my cork today. So I've got these out. I've got some charms sitting in this box here. I've got a few supplies in this box, and just odd and end things that I've collected over the years that I can draw from, and I even use some uh, brads. I have one of these that I made that I put a brad on. I don't have it here with me anymore to show you, but it's behind me. So anyway, you can use anything. If you can glue it on or stick it in, you can use it. And I've got some little bird embellishments, and I made one with a bird on top, and I showed you that in the first clip. I don't think I'll use those today, but they're here just in case I want them. And there are these little, and I don't know, little rings. I don't know the names of this stuff. So, but these little rings come apart and I know that you twist them forward or backwards to yourself or away from yourself. You don't pull them apart so that you don't distort the ring and that way you can close it easy. But I used a bunch of those and then I have, like I said, the charm box and I pulled out some charms. So I pulled out a few things here that I might use in this one, just a few little charms. And this is a button type charm, but it's actually got holes in it. It's for jewelry, so I could count that. And I've got this bead here also that I might use. And I may or may not use any of this. I mean, all of it or not. And I've got this charm, phrase charm. It's possibility begins with imagination I liked. And I've got a key that I pulled out. And then I've got some beads. I don't know if you can see them. I'm not gonna pull them all up, but there's some beads sitting off the side here that I put in a little row here. Let me see if I can scoot them up that I might hang from the charm once I put it all together and that brings me to these but I can show you these eye pins I guess I don't know there's two types these long pins and one has a little hole and circle at the 
top and one has a flat head pin top. And I've used both. It just depends on what you want to do. On these, I might use the flat head. And then at the other end, after you put your beads on, you cut it the length you want it and then you fold in um, and make your hoop or your hook to hang it with. So we'll get to that at some point. And then I use some uh, like little pliers, little um, wire snips. You can you can cut wire with this and you can also grab hold and twist and turn. This one's like a needle nose plier also but it's got the round little tips and I use this occasionally but not much. Most of the time I use this just kind of a flat and occasionally this one just in case I need something to cut with. I usually cut with these, the bigger ones. I don't know why I just do. Now the other things that you can use and I have used it on this is this is something you use for fishing this here and I'll show you what that looks like but this is for fishing and I don't know what it's called but you get it in the fishing section of like Walmart or someplace like that and maybe Hobby Lobby carries things like this now but the other part of that that goes into the fishing section is these and I have used these also I've used this at the top to kind of use this as a hanger I don't unhook this to do anything with it which you can do but it's just for hanging so um, what else there's a bunch of different closures and clasps that you can get in the jewelry section like this one here I've used something like that except a little smaller I've used these I don't know what these are either but I've used them and I just attach them to the end so that I have something to hang with and just go to the jewelry section and just look through and look at things that look like you can hang or attach to or from <laughs> and that will help and the other things that I've used, uh, I did use one of these round rings, like a keychain ring, but I don't use those very often. So, and then the other thing, let's see, I did use some chain occasionally, and this is in the jewelry section also. It comes on long strands, you cut as much as you want. I've also used these, and these are either Tim Holtz or Seven Gypsies, where it's got a clasp already and a little chain attached and a little round ring at the bottom, and I can attach it to my little pen here that I use, like this. I can attach it like that. I may or may not do that today. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to put the top yet. I haven't decided. And then all these little rings I told you about. There's also some... Um, oval shaped ones that I use occasionally versus round looking ones. And I don't know the difference. I just know that I grabbed them when I saw them a long time ago. That's why I don't have the packaging. I took everything apart and put them in containers so I don't have the packaging anymore. And this here is the top of a key ring and I used it on one but I don't use them often because these are not designed to hang from things that are I'm going to get a lot of abuse. Like if you use them for a key ring, I think it'd fall apart because eventually stuff like this might come out. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it'd last because I use glue and stuff, but my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So when I close my little clasps and things, sometimes I don't get them as hooked as they should be and they might come apart. So you have to fix them. And I just wouldn't want mine banging around on a keychain, but I would hang it from a little mirror or a lamp or something like that. But you could, if you bake them really secure, use it as a keychain, I guess. And this is what you would use. So, um, let's see what else. I have these little hooks that came. These are seven gypsies. They just have a little hook and a little uh, charm on it already. And I did use those on a couple. And there's, there's a longer one also. I haven't used the longer one. And let's see, is there anything else that I might have used that I haven't told you guys about? Oh yes, 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 yes. These here. Now these are, these are hat pins or corsage pins or things like that where you can make your beads out of them. I made a bunch of charmed beads on pins and they're over there on a pin cushion. You've seen them before. And um, these are really long ones. But the ones I've been using are shorter, and they are right here. Just a long pin like you would put in a corsage. You can find these in the bridal section of like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. 
And I think that is, oh, and ribbon. I have ribbon, I pulled out this that I'm gonna use today. This is an organza ribbon, it is gold. And this is a little piece of Clooney lace. And I just happen to have this size and it fits around here perfect. I don't, I'd have to cut it. So I'm just gonna use that piece. And I might use another piece of ribbon somewhere. Go grab that, it just depends on what I do once I get started. And I also use some scissors. And then I have some Aileen's Turbo Tacky Glue. You can use um, any kind of glue you want as long as it's something that'll hold. And that holds and works for me just fine. And what else? Oh, if you use the birds, what I do is I take pieces of little uh, jute strings and things like that and I take them apart, make fibers, and I go get fabric strips and I tear the fibery, like ravelly parts off so that I can clump it up to a little nest and stick it on top here and put my little bird. But I'm not going to do that today, like I said, but that's just another option. And I think in the first segment of the video you can see the one with the bird and you can tell the little way I made the nest. Okay so let's get started and if there's something else I forgot I'll tell you when we get there. Okay so let me put this stuff away and I'll be back. back. Okay so on a couple of mine I decided that instead of just attaching the hook into the cork which I did on a few I would like something in between the cork and the pin and these happen to be long enough that I can do that. The eye hooks are not long enough so you'd have to screw those in and you couldn't put anything in between like, like this here. And so on this one I'm going to put the heart on the pin and then put it down into my cork. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the top and bottom of my cork. You can do the fabric first, that's fine. Either way you can do anything you want in any direction. I'm just winging it as I go. I've done it both ways. I've done the wrapping first and then I've done the tops and bottoms. But in this particular case I'm going to do the top and bottom first. And what I do is toss my little pen into a box of links I have to dig through to find it. That's what I do first. <laughs> and then, oh my, okay. Okay. Uh, I kind of find the center and you know around here if you've been here any length of time that this is not a perfection type place. We don't go for exact perfection. So I take my glue and I put a little dab in the uh, center of my cork or center-ish area of my cork. About right there. And that's just so once I get the pen in it'll kind of adhere to the top part of the pen right here. So it has a little bit of stability and it might get a little bit on my pen as I go into the cork. So, And sometimes they go in real easy and sometimes they don't and I've been having to push down like this but I'm not going to do it on my Gnostic mat. I'm going to do it here off camera on my table and I'll show you in a second. There. Okay, so I've got it pushed down into my cork and I just pushed down. Once I got it started, I pushed down and pushed all the way in. So now it's sticking into the cork and it is going to dry. The glue will dry and it's not perfectly centered and it's a little wonky because this cork is not completely straight across the top, but I don't care about stuff like that. So it's not a problem. So then the other one I'm going to and I always try to find the center area a little bit, but once I put glue on it, I can't find it anymore. So what does it matter? I don't know. It's just habit. So <laughs> you can do that step or not. And I'll just put a little more glue down here. And then I put my pen through my charm. And then I find the kind of-ish center. And I do the same thing again, get it started. And then I push it down the rest of the way by pushing down on my table. And I push it in pretty secure. And then I make sure that my holes on the bottom line up the same direction. So that as I hang things, it's not like one's facing one way, like sideways and one's facing front ways and everything's kind of wonky. Because things hang wonky anyway, so you want to make it a little easier for it to hang properly, even though it won't be perfect. Okay, so I've got the top and the bottom on, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put my 
ribbon on in my trim and I just take my trim and I measure around and I get it to kind of touch. I don't want it to overlap too much because I don't want it bulky. It can overlap just a little bit, but if I get it just almost to the center of each other, I'm good. And then I'm going to put glue down, make sure which side's which. Clooney lace is hard to tell. I don't even know if there's a right side or a wrong side on Clooney lace, but it doesn't really matter, I don't suppose. Okay. So then I put glue all around my cork Ugh. got glue in my mouth yuck and then I decide which is going to be the front and the back and it doesn't really matter at this point because you're not going to see any of the cork not really but we'll go with this is the back I kind of center it and bring this to the area of the back and then just hold it and Clooney lace sticks real well to this. Some of these laces and ribbons and trims that I've used, I had to hold them a long time and I don't know, I don't have the patience to do that for very long, but uh, the Clooney lace sticks pretty good and this Turbo Tacky Glue does a pretty good job. So I've got that on there and while this is drying, a little bit more right here. I'm going to take this ribbon. I'm just going to get a piece that I can measure out. And this stuff's kind of in my way. I don't usually work with this in my way here, but I had it laid out to show you guys. There. Okay, I'm just going to take this and decide about how long I want it. And I've been tying bows or just knots. And on this particular one, I think, I think I'll just tie a knot so I don't need it as long. And this is another way of helping this stay on your cork. You can tie your knot real tight and it'll stay on pretty good. So find the center-ish. So tie your knot right here in the center and that, when I say center I mean I'll show you in a second I'm busy right now y'all <laughs> when I say center I mean have your holes here facing you you know not this way you want it this way because this is kind of what I'm trying to make the front and then I just make a knot right there If it's not centered, just pull it around a little bit and you can get it centered up. And this is kind of, kind of center. And at the point that you do this, you can still turn your little uh, hooks. So you can make a little adjustment if you need to. And then I just trim off my ribbon however long I want it. I can always trim more later if it's too long. Okay, so there's where we're at so far. And I wasn't sure what I was going to use here, but I really think I want the key at the bottom. And I want my little beads at the bottom. And I might put, hmm, I might put this at the top. Now, I think I'm going to skip this. I probably won't use this. And I probably won't use this either. I really like this. Okay, let's just go ahead and make these beads. So I'll show you how I do that. Depending on the size of the beads you're using, if your hole in your bead is rather large, these with the flat top, if your beads are small enough, you can use the flat bottom. If they're large, the flat bottom will go right through the hole. But these here, I think, are okay to use the flat bottom. 
But in my case, I'm going to choose to use the ones with the hole because when I make my hole at the bottom, I'm not very good at it. So I like to use their hole for hanging and my hole for just holding everything on. So I take my beads and I just slide them onto the long pin. And in this case, I don't think I'm going to have to cut anything, but you can see that I have just a little bit of pen left. And if I had just put a little bit on there, I'd have to cut my, my pen off and just leave a little tiny bit of my pen left so that I could take my needle nose pliers and turn them. But because I'm using such long beads, I don't think I have to cut anything. And because I don't have to cut anything, I'm just going to take my needle nose plier and I'm going to grab the tip and I'm going to turn it around in a circle. It's going to be like a hook, but then I take my pliers and I squeeze the bottom to close it off at the bottom. So now I've got this part to hang, which is where the company made the little hole for me and did a better job than I did and the bottom is turned so the beads don't come off. Okay, so then I do it to the other one. Okay, so now I want my key hanging here and my little charms hanging here. And I can decide if I want them longer. And if you want something longer or you want to add chain to the bottom to give yourself more area to hang from, you can pull out some chain. You could put your chain on here and add length. And that way you've got your piece as long as you want it. But this one, I'm just going to... Uh, attached to my bottom of cork just this way. And then you close your hook back up. Okay, then you want to hang your beads. You want to open it again like this. Stick your bead on there. And stick it on one side of the key charm or whatever charm you're using and then close it back up. And then do the other one. The other side of the key. Whoops. Close it back up, make sure it's as close as you can get it. And now we have the bottom part done. You can add more if you want to. I'm not going to. And let's see, I have, you know what? I might make this my extension here where I hang it because I really like this saying but that might twist too much, so maybe not. Okay, I'm going to, let's see, maybe I will use one of these hook things. I think these are from Tim Holtz. Might attach that there. Then I could attach this here if I wanted to. So on this, I just take the bottom little hoop ring that he's provided and I twist it apart like the other ones I've been doing. These are a little harder to do but still can do it with my fingers. And then push it back together. Now these are a little more stiff so I do need the other ones to help me a little bit. There. Okay now my hook is on. 
And now I have more places to hang things if I want to. And we'll decide on that in a minute. Right now, what I want to do is I'm going to put something on my charm, and I don't know what that's going to be. I thought I might use this little bird. I really like this little bird. I may still hang it on the bottom. I've got a butterfly that's really cute that I could put there. And I've got this hand that says handmade. You gotta turn it this direction. Yeah, this direction. It says handmade on it. I might put that on the back. So on the front, let's put this little butterfly. And that's where these little pins come in. And I'll get out two just in case I use the hand on the back. And you don't need them very long, so I'm going to cut mine down to probably a little bit more than half. So you see I cut that much off. It's a little more than half. And then put my pin through my butterfly like that. And then I take my glue and I put a little bit of glue on the pen, which I don't know why I do it, just probably doesn't matter because it probably squishes to the top. But then I put a little glue where I'm going to put it and just stick it in. And it's sometimes hard to do on the side. Sometimes you get a little area of cork where it's difficult. Just push a little harder or maneuver a little bit and it'll eventually go in. Okay, and then I start pushing in. This one seems to want to go, which is unusual because most of them I had to fight with. And then I just line my butterfly up, turn it over, press down on the other side real hard, push it into the cork. And now I've got my little butterfly attached. Okay, and I think I will put the handmade on the other side because I really like it. And I kind of just measure with my eyeballs center 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 and do it about right there where the center is and stick it on like that okay so that's kind of how my method goes but i gotta cut my pen make sure my handwriting on my handmade is correctly facing the right way stick the pen in Judge for sure. Okay, I got it started. Now I need help. Push it in. Because this one's giving me our time. And this one's bending a little bit. So just work with it until you get it where you want it. Okay, so now the hand is on the other side and the glue is going to be drying so that won't show up. Okay, so now I've got that much done and it's looking really cute. So now I need to decide, do I want more hanging here? I thought I might use this on here, but it's too bulky, so we're not gonna use that. And I'm not using this, but I think I might want to try to put this on here. Because I really like that, and I'm just going to do the same thing I did a minute ago, and. I'm going to place this at the bottom here. I think this will be fine right here. Just attaching it to where it makes the most sense to me. Okay, so then I'm opening the other one. Now I'm going to line it up straight as much as I can. It may twist a little bit, but you know, c'est la vie. All right, so now there's my little charm and it twists in the wind. So however way you're holding it, it's gonna show or not show. But people like to look at things. So if I pick something like this up and it's like this, I'm gonna finagle it around and see, oh, what's that say, what's that say? And it'll be a nice little surprise. I like it. All right. So then now I want to decide, do I want my bird on here? And I think that I don't. I don't think I need it. So we'll 
deal with that later. So I guess we're done. I guess we're not going to do anything more to this, except maybe I could hang another uh, string of like these beads up top here and make it pretty. Okay, I decided to go ahead and make another string of beads, and I've already done it to save a little time. So I'm just putting it on the charm now. And I'm just going to stick it at the top next to... Or maybe I'll put it on this. I think I'll put it on the charm that I added and not the hook. So line it up the best you can. Okay, now it just hangs, and I can bend it a little bit. Now it just hangs like that. There. Okay, so that's it. I'm done. I'm going to pack this all up and start on something new. But for now, I'm gonna go take a walk with my Oscar and then I'm gonna ride my bike for 15 miles and I will see you guys again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>